Welcome to my channel guys. Today I'm here with my wife's 2021 Camry XSE. This car has the 2.5 liter inline four cylinder. I'm gonna be doing the first oil change on it myself today. I'll walk you guys through that. If there's something you're interested in trying to attempt yourself. Had the car just shy of two years now. So we allowed the Toyota dealership to maintain it the first couple years with the Toyota Care. Uh, I tried to get in for an appointment because I really didn't want to feel like wasting my time dealing with it. But since I am going to make a video, unfortunately, they were a good month out before I could even get in for a service. Just booked up like everything and shorthanded like everywhere else. Is the excuses we're getting. So anyway, I'm just going to do it myself today and I'll walk you guys through it. Actually able to do it about $30, roughly cheaper than the dealership anyway, using premium products. So let's get started. Here we are guys, like I said, this is the 2.5 four-cylinder. Whether it's this vehicle or another, if you are not familiar, there are lots of resources out there to find out exactly what you need. Most of your vehicles will tell you. This one specifically says engine oil, SAE 016. Now I know there's a little bit of a debate right now with oil shortages and supply and demand, blah, blah, blah. A lot of dealerships are supplementing with 020. You, you can do that if that's what you need or want to do. Uh, today I will be using 016. Like I said, if you've watched any of my videos before, I like to use the AMS oil products. This is what I will be using today. Here's the engine oil. If you guys want part numbers, things like that, this is the filter that I'm going to be using. I don't sell AMS oil. You guys can utilize whatever you want. However, the AMS oil website is a good resource for information. If you guys want to look it up, you can literally look it up by the vehicle. And it will tell you the viscosity that you need, oil capacity, it gives you the torque specs for the drain plug there, all that information. Even in here under the AMS oil website, it says 016 is best choice for good fuel economy and good starting in cold weather. If it is not available, 020 oil may be used. However, it must be replaced with 016 the next oil change. So take that for what it's worth. Like I said, I'm using 016 today. So let's get started. Here we are underneath the car, guys. Car is jacked up. We got the rear wheel chocked, got jack stands. Always be safe about what you're doing, especially if you're not in a fancy shop with a lift or anything. It'd be real cautious about what you're doing. Uh, once you get underneath the car, you're gonna see this access panel here. We got four bolts here to hold that up in there. You're gonna wanna remove. I don't know if you can quite tell on the camera, you can either stick a Phillips up in there or in my case, we're going to utilize a 10 millimeter, and we're going to get these pulled off so we can access the oil filter and the drain plug. As you can see, once you get that fourth bolt, that cover just comes right off. Put that somewhere out of the way. And you can see we can get to our oil pan drain bolt there it's gonna be a 14 millimeter and there's our, our little filter hanging right up in there uh, you're gonna need a filter wrench of some sort to get that off a lot of people in the dealerships will sell you the uh, little cup style I believe it's a 64 millimeter don't quote me I don't have one of those that's not what I'm utilizing today mine's a little bit more archaic I really don't care if I maim the filter or not as long as we're getting that out of there it's getting replaced anyway So you want to get your drain pan of some sort situated under there, guys. Like I said, it's a 14 millimeter. We'll get our oil drain pan bolt pulled out of there. Get our fluid draining. I always like to do this on a warm motor. Nobody likes to work on a hot engine. I get it. It helps allow that to run out of there a little smoother. So we'll let that drain a little bit and get everything out of here. Uh, one other thing I do like to do personally once I get that draining, so we'll come up top here. And I like to remove our, our oil fill. We'll see that it will allow that to uh, run it out of there good and steady. We'll get that all drained out of there and then we'll get that filter out of there. As you can see, the oil is dribbling at this point. We got most of the heavy flow out of there. So I've reached up here with my oil filter wrench is the style I'm using. I'm gonna, we're gonna get this pulled loose. Get it out of the rush way by hand. We can go ahead and let this finish draining as well.
So I'll go ahead and let that drain for a minute and we'll continue. See, if you've ever seen any of my other service videos, you know, I like to write the date and mileage on any of the parts, even filters that I replace just for future reference if ever needed. One other thing I'll go ahead and do while I've got the new filter out before I put it in, I'll just dip a little oil and, and lubricate that O-ring up just a little bit. You can attempt to pre-fill this with oil a little bit if you'd like. Uh, it's going to be difficult because it sits in there at a 90 degree angle. You might be able to fill it half full. I guess we can go ahead and try and kind of see what happens there. Then we'll stick that up in the car. One other thing I'll point out real quick is it's a huge pet peeve of mine. Do not use your wrench to put these back in, especially this particular filter. It's tiny. There is no need for that filter to be that ridiculously tight, especially if you're going to be the one fighting it to get it off next time. You can see this filter, most of them all have instructions is exactly what to do. It tells you hand tight, another three quarter turn, some of them are half turn, whatever it may be. Point being, there's no need to rinse that on with your filter wrench. Yeah, you can see some of that new oils puking out of there with that thing being at such an angle. Now that we've got the new oil filter installed and properly tightened, we'll go ahead and put the drain plug back in. As you can see, we're just down to a slow drip at this point. Don't forget we'll get that in, and don't forget the torque spec, according to AMS oil, was 30 foot-pounds on that. So I'll get that torqued down, and then we will get the car lowered back down, and we'll start filling it up. And we're there. I always like to double check before I actually fire the motor. We'll grab the dipstick, check our level and see where things are at. Could read a tad on the high side because we haven't technically cycled anything through the filter yet. Just up over so we're about perfect. So we'll go ahead and fire it up and I will show you guys how to clear the display. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the car fired up here, guys. If you're like us, you've probably got the service Reminder message up here in the driver information center. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to clear that out and reset that uh, You're gonna utilize your controls over here on the steering wheel And we're just gonna cycle through what we need. You can see we've got our little service triangle up there up top Let us know you're gonna cycle down through here to looks like the little gear down there It's gonna bring up your options. You're gonna scroll over through it how well this is showing up there. It's gonna be the second to the last one here, little car with the little gear up there. You're gonna hit, okay. Hold okay to change settings. Scroll down here to scheduled maintenance. Push okay to reset it. Gonna conf double confirm that we want to reset that data. Hold okay to scheduled maintenance reset complete. There you go. Now you can back back out of that and all your service reminder should be gone. That little orange triangle up there in the top is gone. We'll let this run for a minute. I'm going to shut it down, double check the oil level second time and we should be good to go. So I came and clean up my mess here. Car's been sitting about five minutes roughly since we shut it off. Go ahead and grab that oil dipstick. We're going to double check our fluid level. Cheap insurance, take an extra second, just make sure everything is copacetic and good to go. And we are exactly where we need to be. So anyway, I hope you guys find the video helpful. 
you know, my channel has kind of become a wide array of automotive maintenance and automotive related stuff. Uh, some of which you may or may not enjoy or find particularly beneficial to exactly what you're doing. Either way, I appreciate you guys taking the time. Quick hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. It helps me out. It's what keeps the videos coming. I hope you guys find this one particularly useful. Might save you a few dollars and definitely some time, especially if you're like myself and you're having a little trouble getting scheduled and getting in to one of the dealers for your service appointment. Like I said, I've got three dealerships relatively local here within within range and all three of them were booked up into the holidays at this point we're already roughly 500 miles over our service and maintenance reminder period so i definitely wanted to get this done as quickly as possible amsoil was able to get me the products within two days and i'm able to get this done and get the wife back on the road and try and take really good care of the car and hopefully this thing will last us many miles anyway thanks again guys and we'll see you on the next one